bearings. After a good roll, great look inside. You occasionally have a bad roll or rolls. Not good judgment here. Life is not a 300 game. There are some bad frames. And that was one of them. But he has been solid all game long. A lot of spark for Bob Knight's Hoosiers. Hoosiers down nine with the ball. As the clock ticks down to 14 minutes remaining here in Orlando. In the end, eliminated in the first round last year out west by Missouri, 65-60. That's a two-pointer for Neil Reed. He only has three points in this game. He averages ten and a half. And it's a seven-point deficit facing Indiana. And one of the few times he's had a good screen flared to the corner and got a look. The guard, yes, fairly wide open and missed the line drive shot. Abrams was fouled on the floor. After he got the rebound, he was fouled by Rolls, who is slow to get up. What a pick by Gurley. Uh, down, down the other end, just one little high. Flair routes, he can get a passing lane. The knockdown by Reed, they need him to get on a little bit of a roll. And the other end, Curley, just solid with a pick. Freed up Danier down on the block. Mickey Curley is the brother of Bill Curley, one of the great players in B.C. history, now in the NBA with the Trailblazers. Curley kept that rebound alive. Ranger continues at a very tough shooting night. He's now one for eight from the floor, and that was not a difficult shot. Reed had trouble with the dribble in the lane. Woodward stripped him and came away from the ball, hawking Evans with the ball. And judgment, you know, you've got to have good judgment. Nice play by Evans, keeping it alive off the glass. Indiana down seven. Long way to go. 13 minutes remaining. Reed trying to make it a four-point game. Neil Reed, a three-pointer. And that was Evans with the dribble. Creates the collapse of the defense, the kickback. Seven straight points for Indiana. And the Hoosiers are within four. Unselfish play, Sean. Give it up. Evans been solid with the passing read. On fire of late. Himself with his play. And we're talking about Marshall, a number one scorer in the conference, player of the year, had eight threes in one game, MVP of the conference tournament, just not giving us that kind of performance tonight. Only two two-point field goals for Paul Marshall. Push off by Duncan. Good call. And that is the first foul on Duncan. And only the third personal foul against the Deeks in this game. Well, Newton doing a good job with him down there. Just bodying up against him. Tim Duncan getting a little frustrated. One of those weird scores up there. 41-20. Here's a walk that time on Stokes. 41-28. One of those scores where it looks like you've got a blowout going, but you know, a three-point shot puts it into 10 on the 10 spot. Of Roswell, good idea to get rid of it. Not good against the press. And you notice Wake Forest not attacking at all. Happy to play this game one half court at a time. Duncan now with double figures. Well, we're, seeing, we're seeing Rusty LaRue do a lot of things. Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. DC had a double digit lead moments ago, but they've gone cold. And now the Eagles' lead is four with 12.40 remaining. You'll love to see what's run off the timeout now. Go, go the guards to the box. And now some screen ins low. Down to 10. 10. Trying to shed roll. 10 exploded in the bucket. Oh, you got to contain the dribble. Indiana had been stepping up their defense to get back in it. Big break down there. Roll seeing a lot of playing time tonight. And foul and a hand check on Daniel Abrams. He now has. Three fouls, two fouls, both in the second half. Unbelievable, huh? You're used to Indiana, and nobody gets in with the bounce. Somebody pinching and stepping in. And that time, Evans had Dan Ye out there, wisely put it on the floor. 
Miller looking inside. Evan Mandeville, Patterson, the front court. Good defense by Granger, and he kept it alive for Curley. Granger kicked it out to Penn. Even though Granger's had a tough night scoring, he's another big reason why BC is so much better this year. Last year as a freshman, contributed very little, played very little. This year he averages 10 points a game. Penn left open for three. Curley and Mandeville, and it's Granger sneaking in, and he gets one to drop. He's listening to Sean McDonough. You're thinking of that three against Pittsburgh in the Big East that was big for them. Curley, effective inside the big bodies. Evans, high arcing three. Curley, it comes back to Curley. And just as quickly as Indiana got within four. The lead is now eight. BC trying to make it 11, but Dard's three wouldn't go. Curley was fouled and will shoot two. Abrams kept that rebound alive for Mickey Curley. Well, it's not his last hurrah, but <laughs> Curley has all of a sudden counted all the precincts. They've answered, and he's responding. But the bigness and the physical play, I think, takes its impact on your shooting at the other end. But right here, Danye kept it alive. Curley able to get in. Just activity and being in position to bang a little bit and not a factor in the end on the grass nobody identifying keeping them out making that arc and stepping to the ball Curley made the first free throw there's a sophomore from duck free massachusetts the south of boston one out of two for the foul or a lane violation. Tough to tell. I believe it's a lane violation. When you live in Duxbury, can you vote in Boston? No. It's probably uh, 35 minutes south. Oh, okay. Very nice town on the water. I was just curious. <laughs> the pluralities are outstanding some years. Yes, indeed. Double dip. There are some cities where you might get away with that. <laughs> Right out of that timeout called by Jim O'Brien. BC has put six unanswered points. Four-point lead has gone to ten nearly midway through the second half now. Evans has had a very quiet night. Seven points, only two here in the second half. Abrams steps in front and gets called for banging Andre Patterson. I thought it was a great defensive maneuver. He had taken Evans' dribble path away. They've gotten back into position. Curley bounced out. This is good, solid basketball. This is when you say to the official, check the P in the whistle, leave it in your pocket. I mean, you're going to have a little contact. That's basketball. Now it's three fouls on Abrams, and that becomes a concern. All of them here in the second half. Evans trying to get it going. This is another three, and Curley controls. The man on the spot. Nikki Curley giving Boston College excellent minutes off the bench. Abrams, the one-hander, and the lead is up to 12. He's so good screening and freeing himself. Very intelligent basketball player in the offensive end. This is the largest lead for Boston College. Reed, the pull-up, rattles out. Patterson fouled. He'll shoot two as he was hit on the arm by Antonio Granger, second foul. And Granger, sophomore from Detroit. A lot of guys pulling the pants now. A little fatigue setting in. I think when you look at this Indiana team this year, is direction. I don't think he's ever had the extension on the floor that he would like to run the offense, coordinate the defense. And he's not looking at us, by the way. He's looking at Neil Reed, who's looking straight ahead. Wisely so. Talking about the kids setting in on the players. Didn't you get the sense, talking to Bob Knight yesterday, he was tired that this season has worn him out. It was a difficult season in many ways. He mentioned his team mm -hmm. very unpredictable. That was frustrating to the coach. He also had some problems with players. Ron Wilkerson kicked off the team after an off-the-court episode. It, dra it drained him, and, and I said, you know, what if you had my record? He said, I would have quit. <laughs> <laughs> that's his, I think that's uh, this a couple of years ago. And Abrams a miss, but there's Scooney Penn. will get the rebound and take it out with a fresh shot clock. Five rebounds for the, diminu the diminutive Sco Scooney Penn. Granger way off, rebounded by Patterson. 
Looking for quick early hits. They made him use the clock a little bit more with his own nice little deflection by Bedard. Granger frustrated that he couldn't grab it after Bedard had poked it free. Number four, Bevin Thomas. This is Bob Knight, Karen Knight. Concerned, as you might expect, with her husband's team down by 10, 9.24 left. I think that's the hardest task to watch your husband's team play. For my wife, it was impossible. <laughs> Miller stepped on the baseline. Self-defeating right now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And the zone perplexing to Bob Ron Felling at the <laughs> face down. Oh. Boston College has only turned it over once in the second half. Indiana five second half turnovers, 13 and all. Abrams has added a three-point shot to his repertoire this year. He does it sporadically. Thomas off the curly and he missed the jam. And he actually knocked the ball away, too. They could have had a rebound. The guard went for a strip and couldn't get to Reed. In the end of down 10, Evans in traffic. Ooh. Offensive foul, no basket. Wow, what a tough call. What a tough call. I was thinking, get Evans involved in some bumps. He does it on his own. I've got to think Bob Knight was blocked out of this. This is a, well, he was there. I can't argue with it. But he Curly thought he had a long time and just waiting for the contact. Good setup by the big fella. But Evans trying to, he tried the long three, tried the dribble, maybe some bumps to free him next trip. Evans in double figures in scoring in all but one game this year. 29 out of 30 prior to tonight. He still only has seven points tonight. Abrams, after a moment's consideration, missed the shot. Patterson a one-handed rebound. The other hand held by Keenan Jordan, who just collected his fourth foul. You notice Lindemann couldn't get out on Danier. Doesn't want to go out that far from the basket, afraid of getting beaten by the dribble. That's 17 fouls against BC. It's the limit, so it's a one and one opportunity for Indiana. The Hoosiers have only been called for four. 8.26 left in the game. Both teams cold at the moment, and it remains a 10 point spread in favor of the Eagles. Andre Patterson. This season, in many ways, has gone up and down as Patterson's season mm -hmm. has gone up and down. He seems to lack the consistent intensity. Some nights he has it, and there's a terror. Other nights, you hardly notice it. He does have talent, though. I would look for him to have a big year next year, Sean. Still a 10-point game. 8-10 remaining. 52-42 BC. Look at the picks that he runs. I mean, roadblocks. Adam Thomas. The baseline, Sean Thomas called for running over. Neil Reed. Since the ball was in the possession of Thomas. No shooting involved for Indiana. And, yeah, Jimmy had just chastised him. We didn't need it in reading his lips. And how do you sound judgment? Indiana, well schooled at stepping in. Evans starts on the foul line, trying to spin out. Curry has to go out with them. Not a bad move. He can beat him with the dribble. Three, a three. Widen the floor, too, on BC. Went left with it. Zone move left. Kick it to the right corner. Nine points for Reed. That's the third field goal for Indiana in the last five minutes. Would you suggest a little carry there, Sean? I would. And this could be backcourt. But Woodward got there with about a foot to spare. The shot clock 15. Woodward stripped by Evans. Good hands by Brian Evans. And here come the Hoosiers again down by seven. Evans blocked by Curley. What an effort Curley has put forth. And you said it earlier. BC has a lot of players who are very similar statistically in what they do, but it seems like game to game, one of them steps up and gives them the performance they need, and tonight it's Curley. And I think that's where Bob Knight is annoyed. He doesn't have that. It's, mm -hmm. it's not Evans. He doesn't have the consistency of other guys contributing. Woodward steps back and missed the three. BC's been stuck on 52 points for quite a while now. And their lead is seven. With 6.37 left, they've gone four minutes without scoring, have the Eagles. 
Lindemann makes it a five-point game. Six and a half minutes left. And he did a great job creating a passing lane. He was hitting on the box, stepped up the lane. As they call the 20 now, B.C. Seven straight points for Indiana. B.C. had its largest lead, 12 points at 52 to 40. Now it's 52 47. Well, Sean, you had mentioned how he's improved. I just think he's got a better understanding and a grasp of things. And players are confident in their partners if they can make shots like that. And then on that 7 to nothing run. Lindemann had 28 points, a career high in the second to last game of the regular season at Ohio State. Ron Lindemann made an interesting comment a couple of weeks ago about how they motivated Lindemann. We won't share it. It was uh, <laughs> rather gruesome. Here's the lineup later this evening. Michigan and Texas. Valparaiso, Arizona, New Orleans, North Carolina. And the game here between Austin P and Georgia Tech slated for a 9.58 tip Eastern time. Granger, well short of air ball, and his shooting struggle continues. And Indiana looks to continue its run. Evans lost it on the floor, and Reed couldn't save it. Fine defensive play by Scooney Penn to create that turnover. Good, solid effort defensively. And there you think you've got one, and the hustle and scrape. They're coming up with the big plays, BC. By tradition. On the boards is Ricky Parole. That's his ninth rebound tonight. Deeks don't come away with any points, however. Leading by 14. Will Paul Marshall get on track? Maybe that will be the key shot. Well, he hasn't done it with long outside jumpers, but those little running shots of his tonight have been pretty effective. All three of 11 from the feet. Wake Forest brings the ball up the floor without it touching the floor with a dribble. Throwing cross court over the top of the press. Under seven to play, Billy, and just a 12-point Deacon lead. Braswell from the foul line. Sometimes it's not. Perot had it stripped. Good opportunity for a run here by Northeast Louisiana. Joe, Joe, Jones shovels. The shot is good. Newton with four. Dave Odom's got to think about Duncan coming back in the game. He's got three fouls. He's under the weather. And Dave talking things over with Duncan on the way bench as Northeast throws up the press. Parole for three. Long. Allen controls it. And as usually the case in the NCAA tournament, the underdog will get the crowd from all the other schools supporting them here. The Dicks have missed eight of their last nine. LaRue goes to work. Perrault another rebound, and he'll go to the line. Perrault has really bailed out Wake Forest tonight on the glass. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, we talked why Northeast Louisiana is not in awe of a club like Wake Forest. They played this year Arkansas, Auburn, Mississippi State, Memphis, and Houston. Now, they didn't come away with any wins in those games, but they played a lot of those teams very competitively early in the year. Perot hits them both. 11 points for Ricky to match a career-high 11 rebounds. How about this confidence that Dave Odom has shown in his ball club, leaving Duncan on the bench? The follow won't go for Newton. Tough break for Newton. And a big basket it would have been for Northeast Louisiana. Lewisby floats it over to Braswell. To the cutting Perot. Beat the press by going over the top. The Wake Forest attacking that press very nicely now as opposed to what they did in the beginning of the game where they went ahead in the beginning of the ball game and tried to bring it up with the dribble. Ball is very slippery. JoJo Jones asked for either a dry one or a new one. Thank you. 529 left here in Milwaukee. These games coming up. The Tar Heels in New Orleans and Richmond. And Georgia Tech, Austin Peay, Texas, Michigan here in Milwaukee. Valpo in Arizona. A 14-point lead for the Deeks. Although there's 522 to go, 14-point lead. They have to now start showing they can do something from the outside. Marshall had nowhere to go with it. And Wake Forest with Goolsby. And knocked away by Jones. Good hustle 
tackle by Jones. I thought it went off Goolsby's leg. Not very well handled here. Looked like it hit Jones in the back. Yeah, might have hit Jones. Braswell. Long board for Goolsby. Wake Forest getting a lot of good bounces off missed free throws and long rebounds on the jump shot. Fouled on the shot. And there's another long rebound. Well, Perot and LaRue combining to sink. And I think we're learning right now, Bob, how much under the weather Tim Duncan is. Because this game's still in jeopardy. And Dave Odom keeping Duncan on the bench. Allen off his knee out of bounds. Northeast Louisiana is still looking for its first three-point field goal of this game. 0 for 8. And they're going to need some to come back from 14 down. Wake Forest has uh, occupied the ball very well. They've beaten the press now. So you got to start thinking about some threes to get back in it. Push off. Newton jams it. A foul on Wake Forest. Well, that's a three, an opportunity for a three. Newton had an outstanding game against Memphis, so you know he can play against big people. 15 and 10 in that game. Got a little push off inside. He did a good job putting it away. For all, uh, no opportunity whatsoever for the block. Newton. Did a new school record this year was 73 blocks of his own, is it, did Newton. A 46% foul shooter nails it. Again, Wake Forest going over the top of the press with long pass. They're all in the low post. And it goes to Ricky. Braswell. Good shot. I thought Braswell called, called out short on that shot, but it was a good follow through for him. 52 39. Three-point play. JoJo sets the opening in the Deacon defense and took it right to the hoop. Again, they're not doing it with three-point shot, but they're getting three-point plays. Little touch foul on it, but a good dribble by Jones. Fifth best in the Southland Conference of the line. JoJo 76.3 percent. Transferred over from Jackson State. Big miss. Got to make all of those now. Would have cut it to 10. Good backdoor cut by Braswell to open things up for Rusty LaRue. Allen had it poked away. Jones leading a two on one. Marshall for three. The first one. That's a smart play by Marshall. He stepped outside the three, backed up, and let the defender run by. We've got an eight point ball game. How long does Wake Forest go without getting Duncan back in? A steal by Jones. Up top. Oh, a busted play intended for Cook. Now LaRue's trapped. To midcourt and Allen. What Wake Forest is not doing when they're throwing over this press, they're not attacking. A lot of time left. 2.38. Evidently, Duncan can not come back in this game, nor can Rutley. Wake going with the troops they have out there. The shot clock hits nine. And a foul on Northeast. LaRue got hit in the mouth. The foul on Stokes. It's his third. You mentioned, Billy, that Rusty is a proud father. Indeed, wife Tammy making the trip and his son Riley. It takes a lot to impress that young man. Looks like he's already nodded off the sleeve. <laughs> the fact that he made the trip is enough. High school sweethearts. She won more athletic awards in high school than Rusty did. Well, that's pretty hard. To, you know, you keep reading about that, but the guy was picked as the high school player of the year for his football and basketball and baseball prowess. 
So uh, what more could she do? Ricky Perol having a big night when the Deacons need him. Misses the foul shot. Rebound. Again, threes are in order. Down to 217, and you know Wake Forest is going to try to hold on to that ball and go to the foul line now that they're in the two-shot situation. Marshall wants it, takes it, hits it. Another one of those leaners. 53-46. Again, going over the top of the press. Northeast Louisiana is going to have to pick up the ball a lot quicker now. Rusty LaRue to push the Deacons in front by 10 on a timeout taken by Northeast Louisiana, and it's a 20 second timeout. Without Tim Duncan. The Deacons trying to hang out here with a minute 26 to play. In Richmond tonight at the Coliseum. North Carolina and New Orleans coming up. Texas Tech trying to move up with a win over Northern Illinois. And Wake Forest trying to be the first team in the ACC to win a game in this year's tournament. Well, Sean McDonough, there are certain things that are gratifying in life. Good marriage, good family, and when you play basketball. And injured Tony Rutland and ill Tim Duncan and the Deacons getting the ball back here. Huge turnover by Jones. He got caught down on the baseline. No place to go with it. A minute 12 remaining, and the Deacons, Billy, trying to hang on. Clock becomes the biggest opponent now for Northeast Louisiana. Coming up next, Michigan and Texas here in Milwaukee with the winner of that game to meet the winner of this game. Earlier today, Louisville in overtime beat Tulsa and Villanova destroyed Portland. And LaRue, an 88% free throw shooter. His 17th point, his wife Tammy and new son Riley born January 31st. Watch here at the Bradley Center. You know, I talked about his football prowess in the last three games this year. He completed 55 passes against Duke, 41 against Georgia Tech, and 50 against NC State. Time out in Milwaukee with 112 left. Louisiana, Ricky Perrault with a double-double for the Deeks. There's Marshall again, wanting to square up. Joe Childress checks in for Northeast Louisiana. A name that should be familiar to all Wake Forest uh, fans because Randolph was his cousin, or is his cousin. And there's a foul immediately. Going to foul and look to get up quick shots. The Deacons by 10. Last year, Randolph Childress had the incredible ACC tournament and set the all-time scoring record. Seven point seven left here in Milwaukee. Deeks by ten, and Jerry Braswell stepping up to the line to shoot two. Wake Forest shoots right about seventy percent as a team. Braswell right at that mark, seventy-two percent free throw shooter. And here's a look at Joe Childress, the freshman from DC, played on the same high school team as Lewis Bullock, who we'll see in the next game with the Michigan Wolverines. Turned out to be the leading. Newcomer scorer in the Big Ten. Outstanding prospect. I think it was Jim Valvano that coined the phrase in tournament play, survive and advance. And that certainly applies to the Wake Forest effort tonight. But you have to question just what kind of shape is Tim Duncan going to be in and, and Tony Rutland as well. I mean, they, neither one looks like they're going to be in the best of shape no matter what happens. Out of bounds. No place to go. 37.5 remaining. The second seed in the Midwest, Wake Forest, moving on to meet the Michigan Texas winner. When Duncan went out, when Duncan went out at 10.25, Wake was up 43.30, and he has not been back in in that 11 minutes of this uh, second half. And keep in mind, 
assist those in financial need. At the line is number 20, Dwayne Woodward. Abrams, 8 out of 10 from the free throw line. The rest of his teammates are 3 for 11. And this is a 1-1. One one. Knight realizes that her husband's season is about to end in the first round of the NCAA for the second straight year. Indiana in the tournament for the 11th straight year, the third longest active streak on the North Carolina, 22 years in a row in Arizona with 12 years in a row at longer NCAA streaks. Mixed emotions. Her season's over, but she's standing performance on his part because he did all the things that were asked of him, things that he normally will not have to do in a basketball game with Rutland on the court and Duncan on the court. But tonight he rebounded, he played tough defense on Marshall, particularly early on in the ball game, and made a lot of big shots. Joseph Amonet is in, and Braswell goes out. You're talking about Rusty LaRue. Billy, he had four out of five for three-point range. That part may be not unusual because he has had big games from three. But being able to... Valley Conference. Or Valerie. That's been a long day. She has her own conference. Kevin Lemmy reached in. Marshall got that running one-hander down, doesn't he? But a little bit too late. Nine point two remain. Ahmed going to the line. Only been there twelve times this year. Scholarship when they had problems with guard depth. Final game at IU. Penn gives BC its largest lead, 13 points. Patterson, rebound Penn. And Abrams ever the sportsman. He's done that so well, control the game. game on a 10 to nothing run after Indiana got the D.C. lead down to three. Final score, Boston College 64, Indiana 51. Here's Jim Nance. All right, so we have an 11 over a six. Texas Tech, meanwhile, up in Richmond going against Northern Illinois. Last minute, here's Ted Robinson with Larry Farmer. Get off to a good start. ...to the NCAA. And Wake Forest finally breaks through. But you know, this is not the ACC champion that we saw out here tonight. I mean, it's a far cry from the team that last Sunday took on Georgia Tech and had the three big wins in that tournament. Too. All right, so the ACC notches a win with Wake Forest, 12-point winner. Last minute, though, up in Richmond, and here's Ted Robinson, Larry Farmer. Timeout. Five-point Texas Tech lead. Led by nine at the half, led by 15 midway through this half, but the 14th seed Northern Illinois Huskies with a late run, closed to within three. It's now a five-point Tech lead. And Texas Tech has the ball in backcourt. Shot clock is off. And Northern having no choice. They need to foul somebody quickly, but Sasser, one of three on the floor for Tech's pretty good foul shoot. 72%. Number 41, and you're right, the clock is your biggest enemy now. If you're Northern Illinois, you've got to attempt to make a steal. And if you don't get the steal foul right away, both teams, Texas Tech now in the bonus, they'll be shooting two. And on the next foul, if they foul, Northern Illinois will also be shooting two. Sasser shooting two. In the first. Now, if he makes this one, you're down six. You're two three point shots away. You still want to push the ball up the court. Look to get something close to the basket, but if not, look for the draw and kick the kick out for the over three point shots. Then you've got a foul right away again if you're Northern Illinois. And the Huskies have no timeouts left. There's a drive. Maurice Patterson for two. And hit. Tough shot. 
was real good defense to force Maurice Patterson inside of that yep. three-point line. The only open shot he could get. And that actually was the right man for Northern Illinois to foul as Tony Petit caught the inbounds pass, at least by the numbers. He's the right guy, 62% foul shooter. Well, Boston College makes it 5-0 for the Big East. Wake Forest, the first ACC team to win. Jordan Washington. Up big on Iowa. Here it is Texas Tech by four. And Batiste is one for two at the line tonight. Shooting two. You missed that first one. I tell you what, that second one becomes a lot tougher to make. Straight as an arrow, but Batiste's got to soften that up. This is 12th point. Northern Illinois down five. Coleman for three. Hits that. That's a career high 28 for Coleman. It's a two point game. And they foul Sasser right away. What an effort by Northern <laughs> Illinois. This is a team that had two of their starters declared academically ineligible by the school midway through the year, lost a third starter to injury and still won 20 games to get to the tournament. And they are giving Texas Tech everything tonight. Well, Coleman sprinting down the sideline and really didn't make a move, just put on the brakes. That freed him up from the defense and Coleman able to regain his balance and then shoot the three. You watch the reaction from the Texas Tech bench. And there's the reaction from the northern bench. <laughs> Coleman has scored 24 points in the second half. Northern, though, just lost Mike Hartke to fouls. Junior just fouled out with 16 points tonight. Well, Texas Tech may put three players on Coleman when Northern comes back up the floor. Where Sasser can eliminate a lot of the suspense here if he can make both foul shots. If he makes both foul shots, then it's a mute point. But if he makes one and misses one, you've got an opportunity to tie this game with a three-point shot. If he misses, he had a chance to tie it with a deuce or win it with a three. His 20th point tonight. Northern Illinois has no timeouts. That is clutch. Jason Sasser. And we're going to need a miracle. Maurice Patterson. Up for three more. He got it. 1.3. And a baseball pass. This will end it. The basket doesn't matter. Texas Tech survives by one. What a tremendous finish to this game. James Dickey and Texas Tech get their first NCAA win under Dickey's leadership, but not despite some scare from Northern Illinois. The 14th seed, 10 minutes to go in this game, seem to be out of it, and Larry Farmer, they put on one great run. Well, Chris Coleman with his clutch shooting. Mike Hardke with his hustle plays around the basket. Maurice Patterson. Our genuine Chevrolet players of the game, Northern Illinois' Chris Coleman with a career-high 28 points. And Texas Tech's Jason Sasser, who calmly knocked down those two foul shots to ice it. Well, not without a scare, Texas Tech moves on. They'll await the winner of the upcoming game here in Richmond between North Carolina and New Orleans. Great game here in Richmond. The number three seed survives. Now let's go to New York and Jim Nance. All right, Teddy, that was a lot of action there. As you said, a great game. A lot of heart by the Huskies, but Tech prevails. Meanwhile, out in Tempe, off the charts is what Clark Kellogg calls it. George Washington, 75% from the floor. Let's join the action line. 520 left to play. Jones, cool with the follow, and he makes it. Great position from Alexander Cool, and that's 16 points. Woolwich, travel. 20 turnovers now for Iowa. 
look at our game summary. GW, 24 fast break points. Millard, 16 points. They see 24 for Kwame Evans. That's taken away by Murray. Oliver Cool. And that'll be a foul on Cool. Cool tried to get in position to draw the charge, but he turned. When you're 7-1, it's hard to slide over there. And that's four fouls on Alexander Cool, one of the few George Washington turnovers tonight. Kenyon Murray doing a great job. Now he's just going to attack Alexander Cool, and at the last minute, Cool turns to the side. And Kenyon Murray knows his team still has a shot in this game. He can cut it to 10 with a free throw. Murray has 12. Three point play. 5.02 left to play. GW 75, Iowa 65. Here's Alexander Cool. He'll stay in with four. And that's thrown away. Good pressure from Iowa. Mike Jarvis, not a happy man right at the moment. His team was in control of this game, but Iowa has seized the momentum. Settles. Knocks down the three. And it's suddenly a seven-point game. Just under five minutes remaining. They'll get it to Rogers. He's played an outstanding game. Knocked away by Murray. This game is very, very physical. 75-68 GW. Twenty-second timeout taken by Mike Jarvis. And at this point, I think Mike Jarvis is just asking his kids, telling them they need to be tough out there. Winner here will take on the winner of our next game, either Arizona or the Crusaders of Valparaiso. Already today, Santa Clara and Kansas have advanced. They'll play on Sunday. And this has been a game that has featured a number of twists and turns. Iowa, after trailing by 17, has outscored the Colonials 12 to 2. And they've done it with intense defensive pressure that's thoroughly disrupted anything George Washington's been trying to do on offense. W will bring it in. Jones has to take a timeout. 4.43 left in Tempe. Seed in the West, and right now they lead the number six seed, Iowa, 75 to 68. Once again, George Washington will try to get it in, and they do to Rodgers. There's a whistle. Settles kicked the ball. <laughs> Settles has kicked the ball on the inbounds pass. Well, this time they get it to Braid off the screen by Cool, who has four fouls. Well, over, the last, uh, over the last four minutes, George Washington hasn't gotten anything on the offensive end. Jones spins. There's the whistle. the third now on settles in this situation late in the a close ball game an important ball game Mike Jarvis certainly doesn't mind the ball being in the hands of his senior Vaughn Jones Jones and Mike Jarvis both thought he was shooting great back it out give it to Rogers we're 20 left to play great. Haven't heard from Kwame Evans in a while. Rogers, he was trying to pass it behind his back to Evans out at the top of the key. Fortunate to get it back. Evans. Six seconds left on the shot clock. That doesn't go. Cool still battles for it. And that's five. On Alexander Cool. Cool 
misses the jump shot. Then he, get, he keeps it alive once. He just gets his arm tangled up with Jess Settles. That's why the foul was called. He wasn't called for being over the back, but as he brought his arm up, he got tangled up with Settles. And that is a big, big factor for George Washington. Cool not only had those 16 points, was a presence on the inside, but he was critical to George Washington in breaking the Iowa press. So Masherikov will check in, the 6'8 freshman. And this scoring drop for George Washington. Foul trouble. Braid has four. Woolrich and Settles both with three. Settles hits them both and 355 left to play. GW's lead is now five. Settles' parents obviously very pleased with the goings on right here. Evans to Braid. Rogers will set it up. Jones, Rogers, Evans, Musherikov, and Braid on the floor for GW. For Iowa, Settles guards Jones, and he nails the turnaround jumper. Big basket. Woolrich, battle for it. It's loose. Rogers comes away with it, tries to shoot. Was he fouled? They got settles, that's his fourth. Woolridge trying to dribble through pressure, and Kwame Evans knocks the ball away. Vaughn Jones, or excuse me, J.J. Braid squirts it out. Shante Rogers bounces off Jeff Settles. He'll go to the line for two. Fourth personal on Settles. Rogers will shoot the one and one Won't go. Murray comes, comes down with it. So Iowa now trailing by seven. Woolrich. Now Millard almost lost it. These teams continue to really go at one another. Woolrich. Oh, look how high Rogers got in the air. Rogers. Oh, they're going to call Rogers for the fight. That's three fouls. That's his third. Woolrich has had some success taking the ball into the lane against Shante Rogers. He's been able to get it up over him. Braid with the help that causes the shot to be missed. And Shante Rogers and Kenyon Murray battling one another. They call the foul on the little guy. Murray is 6'5", and Rogers is 5'3". Six-point George Washington lead. 14 now for Murray. That lead was 17. Iowa has slowly cut into it. Millard now gets his own rebound over Masharikov. And without Cool in the game, Iowa starting to get to the offensive boards once again. What a comeback by the Iowa Hawkeyes. They look to be dead. Evans, Kingsbury. Millard gets the first shot off and misses it, and now he gets a second one. Watch him put his body on Masherikov, creates some room for himself, and scores inside. Tough, powerful on the inside. Russ Millard, Jeff Settles. five from the line so far that doesn't go and George Washington has missed the front ends of three one and ones well how about this the crowd won the foul they won't get it Rogers comes away with it Alexander Cool missed two free throws and then the last two guys who've been to the line have missed the front end of the one and one Evans Calling for the ball in the corner. Bowen matched up against him. Bowen. Seven seconds on the shot clock. That doesn't go. Settles comes away with it. Here comes Iowa. Three on two. 
Kingsbury. Yes. Two-point GW lead. Murray. Settles. And the folks from Iowa asking for goaltending on the play. And the collar from Tom Davis getting a little tight now. Under George, two minutes. George Washington's really hurt themselves at the free throw line down the stretch. Settles. Now that could be the difference. GW only six of 17. Settles gets them both. And Iowa has cut the lead to one. Check that, we are tied. So Iowa has fought all the way back from 17 points down. George Washington will be looking for Kwame Evans in this situation. Well, that's a very tough pass. Malone steals it. And here comes Woolrich. Nails it. Iowa by two. Guys closing with the rush. They lead by two. This is the basket by Rulrich over Misharikov that puts the Hawkeyes ahead. Iowa on a 23 to 4 run over the last seven minutes of the game. They've erased a 17 point deficit. Rogers to Evans. Back now to Rogers. Under a minute left to play. Evans loses the ball. Kingsbury gets it to Woolrich. Stolen by GW. And here comes Rogers. Now they get Millard. And now George Washington is going to have to do what they've struggled doing the entire second half. The Colonials only three for ten from the free throw line in the second half. And that's only the ninth team foul on Iowa. So this is still a one and one. The last two one and ones, George Washington has missed the front end. Well, Jones is only one of four. But he's good there. He makes these to tie the game. Iowa will have the ball, well, obviously, with the chance to go ahead. 7.6 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. You get it to Woolrich. He's guarded by Bray. Woolrich quickly across the line. Tom Davis just tells him what he wants him to run. Shot clock at 15. Woolrich, Rogers reaching in. It's a dangerous play. Woolrich steps up. Won't go, Millard with the rebound. Now Tom Davis wants the timeout. The offensive rebound again. 5.9 seconds remaining. It's remaining here in Tempe. And Iowa will have a chance to win it. There's the timeout situation. 79-79. Settles will inbounds the ball. Rob it into Millard. He loses it. And is fouled. And it's called on J.J. Braid. Well, check that. 
Kwame Evans. That was significant because that, because that would have been the fifth for Braid. Millard, an 80% free throw shooter. Three seconds left. Iowa leads by one. His two free throws have given the Hawkeyes a two-point lead. GW with no timeouts remaining. And George Washington with the pressure trying to make, or excuse me, I with the pressure trying to make George Washington run time off the clock. Well, they get it to Rogers. He takes it. Won't go, and that's it. Coach Tom Davis now 9-0 in opening games in the tournament. None more satisfying than the one tonight. Outscoring GW 25-6 the last eight minutes coming back from 17 down. All right, we want to quickly get everybody out to the action because they're underway. New Orleans and North Carolina in Richmond. Meanwhile, in the southeast, Austin P and Georgia Tech. That's in Orlando. Texas and Michigan. Milwaukee is the site for that one. You folks expecting the Arizona game against Valparaiso. That's a half an hour away from tip-off back there. And Tempe will start you out with the Texas-Michigan game. And we'll get everybody back out on the road when we continue on CBS after this word from your local station.